How to checkmate in under 10 moves. Chess for children. We make children smarter. Ah, oh, winning at chess is a wondrous thing. The little birdies sing. The air has a magical feel, and all is right with the world. However, what can make victory so much sweeter is to checkmate our opponent in under 10 moves. In this way, we show our total domination and complete mastery of the opposition. Yes, to win in under 10 moves is a glorious triumph of the will. Losing, on the other hand, is the dreaded disaster that blackens the universe. How unfair is fate, how cruel the world, and to lose in under 10 moves is a tragedy that can plunge us in the darkest pits of utter despair. This lesson is how to win and how not to lose in under 10 moves at the chessboard. We will talk about how to win, what to look for, the different types of mates that can occur, and we will see how players, even masters, can be swindled. How to win. There are some basic characteristics that lead to checkmate, and here are just a few to help you along the way. One, the opponent hasn't castled. Two, there are squares on which we can place our pieces securely. And three, the e-file is open. What is castling? For those who don't know what castling is, I've included a quick review. If you are thoroughly familiar with castling, feel free to skip ahead to the next section of this video. Castling. Castling is the only time in which you can move two pieces. Castling involves the king and the rook. When your king moves two squares and your rook jumps over, you have castled in the proper order. Whenever you castle, move your king two squares and then the rook jumps over to the side of the king. Now this involves a few things that are usually illegal. One, the king actually moves two squares. The second thing is the rook jumps over something. So now we'll talk a little bit about how to castle and the reasons why you castle. You can castle if nothing is between your king and your rook. You can castle if you didn't move your king. You can castle if you didn't move your rook. Now there are reasons why you can't castle. You cannot castle if something is between your rook or king. Your king has, if your king has moved already, you cannot castle. If your rook has moved already, you cannot castle. If you are in check, you cannot castle. If you end up in check, you cannot castle. And if you castle past the square that if your king passes over, you would end up in check, then you cannot castle. In other words, you can't castle into check, you can't castle and end up in check, and you cannot castle through check. You can only castle once a game. There are two places where you can castle. You can castle on the king's side, which is the side where the king starts out on, or you can castle on the queen's side, the side where the queen starts out on. There are six reasons why we should castle. One, it brings our king to safety. Two, it brings out your rook. Three, it's the only time you get to move two pieces. 
four. It's the only time your rook gets to jump over something. And five. It's the only time your king gets to move two squares. Yes, castling greatly increases our king safety and also reduces the amount of quick attacks that can happen against our king. Attacking an uncastled king. When the opponent hasn't castled, there are two ways to attack according to Vukovic in his highly recommended book, The Art of Attack. The two ways are, one, to attack the weakest square on the board, F7 or F2, or to attack along the open E-file. Attacking the weak F2 or F7 square. There is a weak spot in the starting chess position, and that weak spot revolves around the square f2 and f7. f2 and f7 are the weakest squares on the chessboard because they are only protected by the king. This means that only two things have to attack the square f7 or f2, since the king cannot take anything that's protected. Attacking F2 or F7 with Scholar's Mate A game that illustrates the weakness of the square S7 is the famous, or may I say infamous, Scholar's Mate. Scholar's Mate is named sarcastically because he is usually the first checkmate that is attempted by children. And in fact, in Latvia, Russia, and other countries of the Eastern Bloc, it is often called children's mate. Scholar's mate is attempted by e4, e5, queen to h5, or queen to f3, both are used, knight to c6, protecting the pawn at e5, bishop to c4. I want you to notice that the queen and the bishop are attacking the square f7. Okay, those are the two things that are required. Now, black can defend this in a number of ways. He can play g6 to block the queen's access. He can play queen f6 to protect the square f7. He can play queen e7 to protect the square e7. He can even do d5, although this loses a pawn. But I think the best move, the best move is knight to h6, which protects the square f7 and brings out a piece. Scholar's mate is indeed easy to stop by anyone who, who understands that the attack on f7 need only be blocked or protected. If, however, our opponent ignores these things to do to protect f7, then checkmate is quite easy. Queen takes pawn on the square f7 leads to total and complete defeat. This ends part one. In our next episode, we're going to look at examples of Scholar's Mate in different forms. And then, hopefully, we'll be able to move on to the next part of Checkmating in Under 10 Moves, which is Fool's Mate. Hi, this is Mr. C from Chess for Children Videos. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, you can subscribe down below. And if you want to see more of our videos, you can click on the side and see those videos over there. Okay, so thank you for watching Chess for Children videos.